Hi, um, I've been asked by uh, one of the subscribers to uh, create a video discussing Azure's internal load balancer and showing how to set that up. Um, so we're going in this in this short video, we're going to be looking at setting up the Azure internal load balancer for both classic mode and Azure resource manager mode. Um, it will be a short video. Um, if um, there's anything you miss, anything you want to clarify, please um, leave a comment, and we can we can sort of chat about that. Now we're going to start off by configuring the load balancer for class internal load balancer for classic mode first. Now you can see I'm here in the classic portal and I've got um, three virtual machines, VM1 which is just starting, VM2 and VM3. And I'm going to, in, in VM1 and VM2, I've configured IIS, uh, so the, the standard default web page is on there. And VM3 is my test VM. I'm going to be testing uh, the internal load balancer from VM3. Um, we'll do the classic mode first and then we'll have a look at the ARM portal and we'll look at configuring um, the internal load balancer for um, ARM virtual machines as well. Now for classic mode virtual machines we've got to configure the load balancer uh, from PowerShell. So if we go to the um, integrate scripted environment and just scroll up here. Um, as always with PowerShell you've got to use the add-azure account command uh, to connect to your subscription first, so I've already done that. Uh, once connected, the command to um, create the internal load balancer is add dash Azure internal load balancer. Now you can see this here on line three. Uh, we need to provide a name for the load balancer, uh, the subnet load balancer is going to work on, and a cloud service name. Now, as all my VMs that are part of the load balancer are in this uh, MGB ADDS test cloud service. Uh, that's the cloud service that I've used, keeping the load balancer and the VMs in the same cloud service. Just uh, be just be aware here as well, line three and four, that is one single line that I've separated into two just for uh, display purposes. Now, if uh, that, that command works and the, the load balancer is created, we can use the, run the get Azure into load balancer, line six, uh, cloud service name, and it will show us details of the load balancer uh, we've created. So if I run that line six there, and we'll give it a second, it brings back details of the load balancer we've just created. Uh, we've got details of the subnet. And it might take a, a couple of minutes just to um, associate with the subnet. But what you should find is that when, when the load balancer is created and, and VMs are assigned, the load balancer will get an IP address. In my case, 172.16.0.7. This is the line. This is the load balanced IP that you'll forward all traffic towards. Um, if you don't see an IP address, wait till you've associated some VMs with the load balancer, and then um, the IP address should appear. So um, line three then created a load balancer. We then need to configure the load balance endpoints and assign them to uh, virtual machines. So we'll take a look here at line. 8 through 12. Uh, first of all, get Azure VM is going to grab the name of virtual machine or grab your virtual machine object. And I've got VM1. So in this uh, part of the command, we specify the cloud service name and the virtual machine name. And we are piping that to the add Azure endpoint uh, command. Uh, so we're adding uh, an endpoint very similar to how we would for uh, a, a, an external endpoint. So the endpoint gets given a name, uh, a name for the load balance set, protocol, local protocol, and public port, or local port, sorry, public port. So uh, what we're trying to do here is, is say what port number uh, the load balancer will work with. Now I'm using the same port for both the local and public port, the advertised port, but you, can, you could use different ones if you had, um, you, know, you went to load balance port 80 traffic to uh, maybe port 8080. Um, as a local port. We've also specified a probe port as well and probe protocol. Now the probes are used to uh, test whether this virtual machine is there, they can accept requests. So I've chosen to use uh, probe port 80 using TCP protocol. So uh, every 10 seconds or so, based on the intervals in seconds, it will send a, a test signal to that, to that port. If the VM responds, then we can send traffic in that direction. The final part of this command is the uh, internal load balancer name. So that's the name of the load balancer we've created 
in the previous steps. Then all that is piped to the update Azure VM uh, command. Now I've done that twice. I've done that for VM1 and I've done that for VM2 um, as well. So they both have access. But for VM2, I've copied the configuration exact to the same Azure endpoint name, same LB set name, uh, same protocol ports and so on. Um, by the way, as well, if you don't use the pro port uh, based on a pro based on a port number, you can use probing based on a, a HTTP uh, address as well. So VM1 and VM2 um, get added, uh, uh, get added, endpoints added. Now we'll come back to this uh, screen in a second and we'll show you the whole command so you can screenshot it and, uh, and, and look at that. Uh, just a couple of things to verify that the load balancer is up and running. If we go back to the classic mode and look at our cloud service, and this is the cloud service that contains my uh, load balance, internal load balance endpoints. Click on that and dashboard. You should see the endpoint um, has been added and uh, to, to the list of endpoints for the virtual machine. So we can see that being added there with the correct IP address. If we go to VM3, oops, uh, and we go to an explorer, and we do HTTP and the IP address, it connects to uh, the web service on, the, on, on that machine and um, the default web page. Now, to test this, what we could do is start shutting down virtual machines and then see if we can still make connection. And you should, for example, if we shut down VM2, because VM1 is still up and running, it should, should still get connection. Or if we shut down VM1, leave VM2 up, exactly the same thing. Now this third VM, uh, VM3 that I'm using here, is in a different IP subnet, uh, but part of the same virtual network. So I didn't have to worry about routing or anything like that. Uh, remember, uh, Microsoft, when you create a VNet and you create multiple subnets, Microsoft sort of handle the routing for you. So if we go back to PowerShell then, and let's try and show you the whole uh, set of PowerShell commands. And we'll leave that on screen for a second. Uh, so you can take a, a, a copy of that. Like I said, if there's anything there that, that doesn't make any sense or you're not sure um, which, which which commands, which order, that sort of thing, anything you want to ask really, just feel free to uh, leave comments and we can chat through that configuration. Now for classic mode, you have to use PowerShell to configure the internal load balancer for this pair of machines. For uh, Azure Resource Manager though, everything can be configured through the portal. So uh, if I go to Azure Resource Manager, so if I minimize this and go to Azure Resource Manager, and I've got a resource group, and inside this resource group I've got three VMs, VM1, VM2, and VM3. Excuse me. Uh, again, VM3 is our, our test machine. Uh, VM1 and VM2 are the machines I'm going to load balance. Now one of the differences here is, when I created VM1 and VM2, I made sure these virtual machines were part of an availability set. And you'll have to do that. The VMs you want to load balance traffic between, uh, the, again, this is an internal load balancer, will we'll need to be part of an availability set for these ARM-based virtual machines. And if the screen ever loads, we'll better um, show you that. So this is VM1, settings, And here we see that uh, VM1 is part of, again, the availability set once that uh, loads up. Uh, ARM, VM1, ARM, VM2, so it's part, uh, both part of the same availability set. And we can see the name there. So again, as part of setup for this test, I, I created these three VMs, place on an, uh, an ARM virtual network, uh, different subnets. But the, di the difference there is this VM1 and VM2 part of availability set. Uh, then I said new and just did a search for load balancer. And as part of the um, uh, load balancers we have 
the Microsoft load balancer that we can create. This is relatively new, by the way. Um, up until about three months ago, you had to do all of this uh, through PowerShell. Back to Microsoft load balancer. And it'll bring up the wizard for filling my load balance configuration. So if we say our um, load balancer, and you see here we're asked, do you want to create a, a public or external load balancer or an internal load balancer? Now mine's an internal load balancer. Remember, the internal load balancers are here to, to load, to balance traffic um, or in your internal subnets. So you might have a public facing subnet that uses the external load balancer. Traffic comes in, that's your front end, your, 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 your web tier. And it might be low balancing traffic to a, a, a second tier, uh, maybe a database tier or an application tier. And this is database application tier where we configure the internal load balancer. So we select internal and we choose a virtual network that wants to configure the load balance on and a uh, subnet. Now the load balancer here, just like in classic, will get given an IP address. Uh, we can say static or dynamic, we'll say dynamic. And we place it inside a resource group. So I can choose the same resource group that contains the rest of my ARM stuff. Region, West Europe is fine. And we say create. So that'll take a, a, a minute to create. Uh, the load balance didn't take very long at all, really. And we should see that as part of our resource groups. This is my ARM resource group. And that's the load balance that we just created. So if I select that, And there's just a, a, a couple of um, bits of configuration we have to do here. Uh, one thing to note is that this load balance does support uh, network address translation. So if you want to use NAT um, for, for this load balancer, we can, and it will NAT the addresses from one, one uh, IP range to, to another. Now I'm not um, using NAT, but we do need to configure what's called a backend pool. Now the backend pool is details of, um, well, things like the IP subnet, uh, sorry, the availability sets of virtual machines that will be used by this load balancer. If we say our back end pool uh, there and say add virtual machines, uh, we'd better choose an availability set. So we, we, we create an availability set when we created our VMs 1 and VM 2. So I'll be able to choose the availability set from this list. And then um, from the at once we choose the availability set, we'll be able to choose uh, machines that are part of that availability, availability set. I need to choose at least one VM, but obviously for low bouncing purposes, we'd choose at least two VMs uh, from the availability set. And they're going to be the machines then that are part of this backend pool that we're going to load balance requests to. So there's the availability set that we created previously when the VMs were created. And now I better choose the virtual machines Oops. that are part of the backend pool. So we okay with that. And it saves the changes to that uh, backend pool. And that will appear here. So we can change that out. So that appears here. Then once the backend pool is created, we can configure uh, probes. So a bit like the um, classic mode load balancer, we've got to configure uh, a probe so that it knows, uh, so it can send uh, test signals to the VMs and determine whether the VMs are online. This time, we can, well, you see here, we can say HTTP probe or TCP probe, and choose a, a web address. 
so CCP or so HTTP to web address or just TCP probe. So it depends how you want you know the the health the sort of is it online is it online to be determined. So we choose the machines that are part of the backend pool. We choose a probe, and then we create what are called load balancing rules. And load balancing rules about how traffic is distributed between the different VMs and what ports we are load balancing, that sort of thing. So uh, we give a name to the rule. We identify with a port or a Oops, like a, so I named the rule, no spaces. Is it going to be low balancing TCP or UDP? What port on the front end? What part on the, on the back end? So the back end port is the um, port on our uh, virtual machines. The front end port is the port low balancing listens on. Then we've got the back end pool we created, the probe uh, we created. We want to maintain session persistence, idle times, and we want to enable direct serve return as well. So with direct serve return, traffic coming from the pool will send be directly to the machines requesting the traffic and bypass the load balancer. Without um, direct serve return, uh, the load balancer can become a bit of a bottleneck. So we create that, and that takes a minute just to create. Then that's our load balancer configured really, once that's done. That's uh, everything in place. Like I said, we're not using NAT for this, so we're not using that. Um, this second load balance here is one I created uh, previously. And again, once you add uh, VMs, add this configuration, you see the, the IP address that's going to be used by the, the load balancer, and that's the IP address that we, we send traffic uh, to. Um, so I've got ARM VM3 here. So we go to Internet Explorer, type in the IP address, and there we go. So we've got a connection there to, to the load balanced uh, endpoints. Again, you can test this by um, uh, not choose, using the load balanced IP address, but you can test this by using um, by, by just turning off my machine, make sure you've still got connection, then uh, bring, bring the machine back on, turn off the other one, make sure you've got connection. And uh, we should be laughing there. Uh, it's almost exactly the same configuration, by the way, in ARM uh, when you configure an external load balancer. So, um, two different configurations there. One for uh, classic mode, done through uh, PowerShell. Uh, and then one for ARM mode uh, that we can configure through the portal. Um, if you have any questions, feel free uh, to leave them in the comments. And uh, as I said at the start of this video, the reason I did this video today was because I was asked uh, via a message yesterday uh, about this configuration. And uh, we sort of like to uh, respond uh, when qu queries come in. Uh, but it won't always be the next day. Um, sometimes it's a bit of leading time if there's uh, something got to be researched. But do feel free to, to, to ask us to provide videos uh, on any of these sort of Azure uh, topics. Um, and also please feel free to subscribe. Uh, we broke the 200 subscribe mark uh, this week, which is fantastic. We'd like to see it get close to 300 by Christmas. So uh, uh, please uh, uh, tell, tell your friends. Okay, thank you very much.